All right, so in this next series of videos, we're gonna talk about fire shorthand, or also known as fish. If you're wondering what fish is, it is a domain specific language for creating fire artifacts used in creating fire implementation guides or IGs. Now, if that didn't make sense, and I'm sure many of you who are watching this have worked with fire, this is something that you've probably seen before. And this is also uh, known as a fire artifact and specifically a patient profile from the base specification of fire. It tells you things like, you know, in a patient, there are certain data elements that belong to that resource, like identifier, active name, telecom, gender, things like that. They tell you stuff about the cardinality. So for every one of those data elements, is it optional? Is it required? And if it's required, how many of them should appear? And then terminology bindings. So for every data element that is of a certain type, it can be restricted or constrained to only a subset of values. So for example, gender is in this case bound to the administrative gender value set, which has a binding strength of required. And the values that it can be is limited to only the ones that you see here, male, female, other, or unknown. So basically, FISH allows us to create fire IGs. And a couple of th things I want to comment about here uh, from my personal perspective, it's a great, great way when you're working with fire to use FISH to create IGs to communicate cross-functionally. The second thing is that it is also an excellent skill set, and I would probably say it's quite marketable as well, for learning how to profile fire resources. This is relatively new. I think Fish has only been around for a couple of years. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's only just a couple of years. And so it's a great skill set because we're going to need people that know how to profile fire resources, which kind of blends into the next comment, which is, I also think it's great for individuals to learn Fish to create these profiles and IGs when they have domain expertise. So individuals that come from a clinical background. So I'm a pharmacist by training. So I have a bit of a, an opinion on, for example, how medications should be modeled. So great uh, pitch for those who are in the clinical realms to learn fish because it's a great skill set. And it's also great to complement your engineering teams uh, if you can write fish and profile resources. The next part is thinking about when do you use fish. And some of these is kind of obvious now, but if you need to create an IG or you're part of a team that is creating an IG, you're going to need to know fish. If you need to create a profile, then you're going to need to know fish. If you need to create an instance, uh, you're going to need to know fish. And just to elaborate real quick on instances, instances are great, especially again, <laughs> pitching again for the domain expertise folks is that Let's say you create a profile for medications. Well, you probably want to give some examples of that profile. So if you have a profile for, let's say, medication requests, maybe you're going to create an example of a lisinopril and all the data elements that is um, representative in there. So you can show people, oh, this is an example of this profile. And maybe for, let's say, you had an observation profile, you might create an instance or an example of a glucose lab or a LDL lab or a serum creatinine lab. Instances are just basically examples. And it, I think it's a great complement to authoring the profiles as well. They go hand in hand. And I would always say you should create profiles and instances together. Uh, the last part is kind of obvious as well, is I just think FISH is a great way to communicate cross-functionally. It's relatively intuitive to both clinical and technical people when you have a FISH um, IG or profile in front of you, and you can kind of like read through it together. So what does FISH actually look like? And on the screen here is the anatomy of a very basic fish file. And it's three key components, the first of which is a declaration. And so you're kind of just describing the artifact that you're creating. And so in this case, I'm creating a profile. The name of my profile is my patient profile. The next is a set of keywords, which is basically metadata about the artifact that you're creating. Now do know that the keywords will depend on the artifact itself. So the ones here are specific to 
a profile artifact. And so if you create other ones like value sets or code systems or extensions, you have different keywords. So just know that. But in general, there's a set of keywords. And then the very last section, which is the meat of fish, if anything, is the rules. And the rules are basically used to constrain to your use case. So in this um, screenshot here, I have three rules. Those rules are constraining name, birth date, and gender for a patient and making them required. And then in the next series of videos, uh, we're going to talk about these key concepts initially, and then hopefully I'll be able to expand on this over time. So we have things like being able to constrain the cardinality for a particular resource to certain data elements. We're going to talk about creating specific instances or examples for the profiles that we create. We're going to talk very briefly about terminologies, specifically how to bind a value set from a code system to a particular data element. We're going to talk very briefly about slicing. And then lastly, we're going to talk about good documentation and creating narrative documentation around your profiles.